Good morning. Welcome to Call to Adventure. I'm Heather Martinson, founder of Celebration Education, where we provide adventure, which inspires creativity and leads to possibility. Today I'm sitting facing our, I mean, you're facing our front door at, uh, here at our Yukaipa Center. It, there was a beautiful sunset here a moment ago, but now it might just wash my face up, and that's okay with me. You can see outside, you don't need to see me. Which reminds me, anytime any of these uh, uh, live streams, Go ahead and just turn it on and listen. Go about your other your business, looking at Facebook, whatever. While you're listening, you don't have to you don't have to look at me. You don't have to watch. So today we're going to talk about the adventures we've had this week, or we we are having this week, the fireworks that you can work on with your children at home, and I'm going to be talking about how you can teach reading at home without any curriculum, and I'm going to issue a call to adventure challenge to you. So. This week, our topic is on the element of Earth, um, geology. So uh, in our workshop class, the students broke geodes to find crystals inside. Then we talked about several different uh, parts of geology. The students looked at the layers of the Earth. They uh, mapped the ring of fire. They looked at the different earthquake movements with the... Um, tectonic plates and how they move according, you know, with each other. Um, and they created Pangea, their own version of Pangea. Uh, then the students got to identify the three basic rock types, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. And they got to each make their uh, little display and take home some rocks. Um, they we talked about the difference between rock and stone well they're pretty much synonymous and so they played a syn synonymous synonyms game and then they did some richter scale math and talked about some earthquake safety then the students all worked together to make and erupt a volcano and at the end they played a, a lava game where they can't touch the ground because it's lava so that was a lot of fun so a uh, field trip tomorrow to Natural History Museum. We have more space. If you want to come, go ahead and sign up. I'm pretty sure the registration is still open. If it's not, let me know, and uh, I'll open it up back up again so you can register. Um, in Minecraft on Friday, the students are going to play a rocks and minerals bingo game. They're going to create their own land formations, and they're going to diagram Earth's layers or play a game on a diagram of Earth's layers, and the build challenge is for them to make a volcano. So that should be a lot of fun. I'm thinking that um, Riley or Manny, Manny Mannequin, will help the students make their volcanoes erupt. So that should be fun. Um, some ideas for you to do work on with your children at home this week is to go ahead and um, make salt dough like we did in class this week, but have them turn that into a volcano. I mean, not a volcano. Have them make turn that into land formations where they have an island with several different types of land formations, like an, a mountain, a bay, a river, things that, that they can show on their little island, all these like 10 or more land formations on a single island. Uh, have your children start their own rock collections. Go rock hunting with them. Um, help them collect, study, label, and display their rocks. The, um, have them make a diagram of a volcano, like a, a cut in half version so you can see what's inside uh, and label those things. Uh, we're going to be doing that in Minecraft. Maybe your kids, even though they're not in the class, they can certainly do that in Minecraft also. Um, I think it'd be interesting for the children to write the story of the life of a rock. It sounds completely boring, but I would love to see what the children come up with on that one to see how they can make the life of a rock fascinating. So that's a fun challenge. So, and remember to have your children bring some of their completed work back to class. We'd love to see what they've been working on. Um, so our upcoming events tomorrow, like I said, is a natural history museum in Los Angeles. Next, oh, and then Thursday, we have, uh, we're going to be webcasting from our Santa Ana location with a group of teens who are going to be talking about their experiences with homeschooling and unschooling. So that's going to be interesting. This is with uh, the Alternative Education Resource Organization. They are an international group 
that helps to helps schools and others find new and interesting ways to learn things uh, authentic ways to learn so i think that'll be a lot of fun um so you can watch us uh the link to the that webcast is on our facebook page or maybe in the um, celebration education families either way you can find it let me know if you need help finding it um we don't have any classes next week for thanksgiving excuse me i've got a sneeze um but then the week after, we have two field trips. We have a docent-led hike to a stream in, uh, in, in, at the Whitewater Preserve that's like out near Palm Springs. And we also have a colonial farm life tour at Riley's Farm that's in Oak Glen. So they're both far for those of you in Orange County, but both definitely worth the trip. Riley's Farm is $12 per person, and the hike in Whitewater I think it's only like two dollars per person, but uh, you can stay in camp if you want because that one that one's pretty far. But they they are encouraging us to camp if you don't have equipment. The uh, Whitewater Preserve actually has camping equipment that you can use. So contact us and we can make those arrangements for you. If you want to go, we will make it happen. All right. So for our philosophy and practice, our our theory of uh this week we're going we're talking about what you can do at home to um to help your children learn to read without curriculum i think uh, i've said it many times but curriculum is designed for one teacher in a classroom with 30 plus children for everyone to keep on the same page at the same time it literally on the same page but uh, all of our children are different and we can children can learn faster and more effectively when they're working at their own pace and working on the things that that they're ready for at the moment so uh, the way we do this is through guess what we read books not textbooks we're not doing worksheets the kids get to have real actual books things uh, fiction and nonfiction that they enjoy so um, that's what we're talking about um, I didn't teach because uh, learning learning how to read is not as hard as you would think. Um, I didn't teach any of my children how to read, but I just read to them, and through the example, they learned to read. Um, I think one of the reasons why children have a hard time learning to read is they because they're they're being given up these tiny little bits and pieces of words and sentences and and things that just don't make a lot of sense children love books honestly i've now okay so but 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 then they're given the way that's presented to them is is made into a chore a, a thing that's difficult for them with these little bits that that don't have any meaning or don't relate to anything uh, i'm honestly i've never met an adult that enjoy snuggling up with a good list of sight words. Guess what? Children don't enjoy it either. I mean, maybe there are some, but um, but even better is if the children are reading directly from books, and it doesn't have to be early readers if they're not yet reading. Um, it can be anything that's interesting. Children are capable of learning even difficult words at a young age. Um, things that are interesting to them is what they're going to want to read. Interesting equals learning. So that's that's just keep the interesting things coming. So see, reading is simply our language in print. We did not sit down and put our kids in, in, in uh, speaking classes when they're learning how to talk, but we talked to them and they learned the language because they heard it enough times that they could pick up on it and they would learn it. They didn't always do it, correctly the first time. For example, um, if a child goes running around the room and says, I run really fast, they use the incorrect form of the word run, but um, we didn't give them a bad grade because they said, I run really fast. Instead, you said, oh, did you run fast? You, you helped them and guided them without giving them any bad marks. Well, it could be the same thing with reading. If When children make mistakes in reading, they, they're they going to pick up on it. They're going to learn from it. It, it is through the experience that they learn, and it's not by um, hitting them overhead with bad grades or correcting them and say, you did that wrong. Um, don't worry, they will be fine, they will learn this. Um, reading so but they need to hear it they need to they need just like they learn to talk by hearing you speak they need to learn to they learn to read by hearing you read by 
seeing the words and you reading to them. You don't get to do that as often as you speak to them, but they will pick this up. If you're reading to them on a regular basis, this is vitally important. You need to do this. They will learn. So um, let's talk about the, the reading environment. Your home should be a bastion of reading opportunities. Um, you have that they should have the opportunity they, there should be books all over the room don't keep books to just a bookshelf or, or the reading room or the school room um, books should be everywhere uh, they there's a, a a technique called strewing and it's very uh, deliberately setting books about where the children will find them pick them up and take an interest in them uh, put them on a coffee table put them on their beds put them on the dinner table don't worry about the books getting wrecked the more it's more important that the kids learn to read, right? We're willing to invest into them, um, buy as many books as you want to help them to learn to read. Um, books are meant to be read, not dusted. So scatter them, put them around to help your children find and take an interest in these books. But children also learn through example. If you want your children to watch more TV, you should be watching more TV. If you want your children to read more, guess what? You need to read more. If your children see you actively enjoying reading, they will follow this at your example and they will do that also. So read in front of your children, read to your children and read with your children. Um, so um, you should read a lot. You should be um, reading to your children frequently. I once had a, a, a friend, a school teacher friend of mine brag to me that the children in her classroom get 20 minutes of reading time each day. I'm sure that's a lot for a public school classroom. However, we in the, we have, as homeschoolers, we have more opportunity than that. They, 20 minutes a day is really not very long, especially for a good book. When um, you're reading to your children, they're going to want to, they're going to want you to read more. They're going to want you to read longer. They love the snuggles. They, you know, just go with it and, and read and read and read. Make, you, your home should be a reading home. It's just a part of existing. Um, and it's never too early to start reading to your children. And it's never too late for them to be read to. I read to my children into their teen years because it was not just helping them learn to read, but it was also an enjoyable time with them together. Plus, if we're reading difficult chapter books, which we were at sometimes, um, I could explain some of the words that they didn't understand. They would stop and ask, what does that mean? And I'd be, of course, happy to help them know what the words are. So um, don't be afraid to read above your child's level. Children are capable of learning difficult things. You don't have to, you don't have to have a process where easy to hard as they're learning, but you can, you can introduce hard things to them from the beginning um, because they're, they're, they're capable of understanding very difficult things if you introduce them to them. And there's nothing wrong with learning hard things when you're young. Um, when you when you are reading simple um, reader books to your children, instead of pointing at the pictures, which I used to do when my children were very small, I eventually realized, well, why aren't I pointing to the words? And that's what I started to do. I would put my finger along the words as I'm reading to the children, and that just gives them more opportunities to see and recognize the the print, our language in print. Well, the sun's really coming up now. Maybe I'll um, just turn a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, so um, one, um, is as you're reading to your children, you can invite them to start reading some of the words. Never make it anything, uh, it always has to remain low pressure and fun um, so that they they're, can remain relaxed and interested in what's happening. Um, one of the ways that I like to do it uh, when helping the children first start reading some of their own words, and again, it doesn't have to be small words, but I would use a rhyming book, my favorite being Dr. Seuss, uh, and I would read the, the, um, 
the, you know, it's a, like a couplet, right? So there's, I read the entire rhyming phrase, but then I leave off the last word. And then the child gets to guess what that last word is. They'll have the clues of the letters in the book. And also they're going to, it's going to be in their mind that this word is going to rhyme with the word in the previous line. So they're guessing it right. And they're seeing the word. It just gives them a, a, an, a sense of accomplishment for something that they are able to contribute to mom reading. It's a lot of fun. Um, so it's, it's like a game. One of my favorite, I mentioned Dr. Seuss, one of my favorite books, um, has been Hop on Pop. What I like about this book, there are other books that do this as well, but, and this does start with small, small words, but it shows the big word on top. That's what the child can read. And then mom can read the smaller words. Go ahead and point to those smaller words as you read them. So the child will be familiar with them as well. But, um, the, these, um, most of the words are like three and four letter words, but even at the end, they get a little bigger. Words that are relevant to the child, they will want to read these because they want to know, I, you know, they, I can read father, I know how to read mother. It's exciting to them if you introduce them to them that way. So um, I encourage you to, um, Again, just make it fun, make it interesting. Um, and little by little, your child will read more and more on their own and will want to read on their own. We'll start picking up books. You'll catch them like one of my sons would stay up till midnight, just curled up in front of the book case, reading book after book. He would get out a stack of books each night and just read until he was just um, asleep. <laughs> but it, he, he was like a night owl. He would read long into the night. Um, so, but be careful not to turn teaching reading into a heavy learning opportunity. It, it needs to remain fun. It needs to remain interesting. And, and um, if your child is reading through something and it becomes a chore for them and they, uh, but before the child gets frustrated, um, if the child, and, and while they're still interested in the story, you can pick up the slack. If it, you can, um, you can say, oh, do you want me to finish reading it to them? Because they might still be interested in the story, but their their reading has become too labor intensive for them. And so you can you can finish the book for them. And that's fine. On the flip side of things, I've seen where um, when a child is ready to really take off in reading, where the mom will be reading chapter books to the child and be done for the evening. And the child is like so caught up with what's happening in the story, they don't want to be done. But you know, mom's got things to do. So um, the child will go and take that book, and sometimes secretly because they know they're stealing from their 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 together time. And but they they need to know what's happening in the book, and they'll start reading. Uh, multiple children I know that's where they really first started reading is in chapter books because they want to know what happened next um, when mom put the book down. So you might be asking, what about phonics? Because this is, for the most part, this is like using sight words. Well, um, just seeing the words and, and reading the words. But if you'll notice, for example, in um, this Dr. Seuss book, it goes in, um, it has similar words together that, um, that they'll having the same sound, um, the repetition of the same sound. Um, so that's one thing I like about this and other Dr. Seuss books. But if you want to, I really like um, Scholastic puts, puts out some really cool um, phonics books. And this this is a set that I bought for one of our students a couple years ago because he was way into Star Wars. But um, the, these Star Wars books and several other types, these types of books, like they've got Lego, several different things, they focus on one um, sound at a time. So this one is short A. And so the words in bold are all short A sounds. And so they can you can get the repetition in where they're practicing those phonics, but at the same time, it's within the context of something that they enjoy, a story and something that they're into, like Star Wars or Lego or whatever um, they fancy. So um, again, you don't need to do, use worksheets for, for phonics. It, it, that might turn into a negative experience for reading and turn them off and make it, take them farther away from their um, learning experiences. So um, find, find ways to make it, to keep it organic, to keep it real, as I would say. So um, 
and so it's not boring for them. So they stay interested. Um, Let's see, I'm skipping over some of my comments. Um, remember, one size never fits all. Every child is different. Every child is going to come to the re learning, uh, reading experience on their own and make it and um, own it for themselves. So you don't need to, um, sorry, I'm gonna just turn. Hold on. Mm. Right, so. You don't need to, um, it doesn't need to be a method. It doesn't need to be a specific order, but you can just um, continue to read to your child. Allow them to learn when they're ready and um, and make it as organic of an experience as possible. Um, I, also, I want to point out, but there's a difference between knowing how, being a reader and knowing how to read. Um, in the homeschool communities, we tend to think that a child is not actually a reader until they pick up the books on their own and read them. So, um, uh, and that happens at a different age for all children. Um, even um, I know uh, a a, a boy who was 10 before he actually took an interest in books and he by the time he started reading he was this voracious reader and read and read and read and read and by the time he was 11 had a stack of books that he'd read taller than himself um, and so there's nothing wrong with him waiting to become a reader it's not that he didn't know how to read he certainly knew the letters and the sounds of the letters but he he was intimidated by reading he was afraid to read and he was afraid to be wrong but he did it in his own time and he was successful i've known um other homeschool friends of mine whose children did not start reading until they're in their teenage years but it didn't matter so much because it's not like they're in a classroom where they're being graded um by the, but by the time, but when they started reading, they started on, in some cases, college material. They were capable the entire time. It's just that there wasn't anything that they related to, nothing that was interesting enough or motivated them enough to to actually take an interest and start to read. So, and, and by this definition, a lot of homeschoolers um, who are readers, Frankly, they are better readers than the kids in the public schools who have limited time to read. I once spent some time in a home where um, the grades were top priority. These girls had to have um, A in all of their classes. They had to be top in everything. Um, but the sad thing was this, this house had one bookshelf and it was in the basement in a closet. Um, in like a little sewing room and uh, it showed that these these girls actually did not value reading much at all um, it was pretty sad to see um, I think it would be better for children to explore through reading lots of real books um, and and have it come, the it come alive for them that way um, I have in my own children they took um, they, my kids, some of, uh, my youngest to read was at four and my oldest to read was at 10. And, but it was uh, at their own time and they all became great readers. My dyslexic son, he, he, he started reading around five, but um, he, even through his struggles, he was reading difficult books like Steinbeck. Not because I told him you need to read Steinbeck, but because he took an interest and he wanted to. So, um, that's that's what I'm, we're looking for. That's becoming a reader is the children who are not afraid to read, the children who are, who um, be, want to read for pleasure, who want to read for information, who are free and energetic readers. That's what we're going for. That's what we need the children to be. So not only do they have the skill, but they also have the interest, and that they can learn to read on their own. They can read anytime, anywhere, and um, not be intimidated by it. So. Your challenge for this week is to try to um, is to have your children. Um, sorry, my notes are messed up. To, um, increase your reading time with your children. That um, you should be reading with your children on a regular basis. Schedule it into your time, daily reading time, and don't make it just 10, 15 minutes. Make it as long as you can. 
um, and as long as you and the children can put up with it, so that they have more exposure to the language, the printed language, and more opportunities to learn from books. And so that's my challenge to you for this week. So um, we have no class next week. I'm also not going to do call to adventure next week because we've got Thanksgiving break all week long. So I'm going to see you back here again in two weeks. And um, I've been I've been um, casting from the Celebration Education Facebook page. I'm going to be switching it over to the Celebration Education Families group. So if you're not a member of that group, go ahead and um, join. I can approve you. Um, and and we'll get you on there so you can be part of continue to be part of these um, live streams. So that's it for this week's call to adventure. Um, I'm Heather Martinson with Celebration Education, where we've been learning outside the box since 2006. I'll see you next time. Bye.